Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Emergency lockdown 3.0 survival strategies, maybe even thriving in this very uncertain world we're in right now. Now, when lockdown 1.0 happened, I did quite a lot of content and I think it helped a lot of people from the feedback that I had about practical strategies and tactics to um, survive and thrive in these uncertain times to start a business in these actually very fertile grounds for business startups um, with the right model, of course, um, or to survive your business if it's been very much disrupted or to even a scale business, to scale a business or to pivot a business. Um, and it's been quite a while since I've shared any of this kind of content because to a certain degree, we've got kind of used to um, these lockdown in and outs. Um, but I actually feel there's been more anger, more emotion, more outpouring, um, frustration, fear in this recent announcement of the lockdown 3.0 than I think there was 2.0, even though I think many people actually expected it. The furloughing was um, announced on the, I think it's the 3rd of December, that it would go to the end of March. Uh, and I think it's been extended again. And I think a lot of people who are in business, they kind of thought, well, that's really more of an indicator of when you think this is going to go on to at least. So I think I, I felt that some people were prepared for it. But actually, in reality, looking at um, the, the massive outpouring of emotion on social media um, yesterday and today, I don't think many people were really ready, really, really ready. So I've got eight strategies and tactics that you can use that will help you through this lockdown, the next lockdown and any other lockdown, um, any other recession or you know, drastic change to the business or economic climate. Now, of course, there are no guarantees and there are no certainties. Um, I can guarantee you there's going to be more challenges coming your way. I can guarantee that. But I can't guarantee how you will handle each situation. What I can guarantee, though, is that if you implement one or even all eight of these strategies and tactics I'm going to share with you, um, I think that, um, you, you know, you're not just going to survive, but you're going to thrive as a business owner. I think that you'll be well armed for an uncertain future. And actually, you might even be able to leverage these situations to your and your client's advantage. Um, quite a few people said yesterday they were really glad I spoke out. They didn't feel that enough influencers, to use their words, were speaking out. There's a lot of risk for someone with a profile to speak out and say what they they feel about, you know, the government and how they're handling this um, COVID situation. And um, I've kept mostly quiet, mostly because I think if any of us were running government, it would be just as hard for us. Um but this time around, I do feel like there's been quite a lot of um, I don't think the data has been transparent. I think it's been misread and even, I, I, manipulated is probably the wrong word. But I, I don't think that there's a, a transparency of data. I think that there's a lot of censorship. Uh, and I think now a lot of people are really starting to question various motives and strategies. Uh, and um, I'm not going to say any more than that for now, because I want to get into the content of this episode. Um, but yeah, I did speak out for the first time and have a little bit of a rant. In fact, I think I called it BS and fuckery. <laughs> so, um, you know, come on, look, I'm lucky. I've got a really nice house. I've, I've got, um, y you know, staff and uh, resources and assets. I'm one of the lucky ones. So many people who'll be spending Christmas alone. So many people who have to shut their businesses down. But, and this is the most important thing I'm going to say. Um, Tracy's just said, I was angry for a day, but using time already to get products on Shopify. That's exactly right. Leverage that emotion, leverage that anger, that frustration, um, you know, to <laughs> fail us said, damn, the new world order. We can, we can have this energy and, and, and um, you know, uh, let it out everywhere, blurt it out everywhere, lose our shit. Or we can have a moment and then actually use that um, energy and emotion towards production, solving problems, creation, creativity, resourcefulness. Um, and that's what really this video is mostly going to be about. I think I was actually starting to say something and got distracted by some of the comments. Keep the comments coming because, you know, I enjoy them. Um, so um, 
we can take this energy and this emotion and we can do two things with it. We can spray it all over the place and be really pissed off and uh, ultimately damage ourselves and others around us. Or um, we can put it into creating meaningful products and services, solving problems. Um, you know, we can turn it into um, some kind of creation or um, motivation, you know, energy. They say with energy, I think it's the law of conservation of energy, which is it can't be created or destroyed. It can only be um, changed in form. I really believe in the transmutation of energy, transmuting haters into motivation and fuel for your fire, transmuting criticism, transmuting challenges, um, all that energy that otherwise could be very damaging. Uh, it can be a, a black hole that sucks all the energy in or it can be like a star that burns energy brightly. OK, so I've got eight points I want to cover. One is multiple income streams. Number two is low overhead models. Number three is a highly pivotal business model or pivotable business model. Mick said time to pivot again. It's probably like a gymnast who's pivoted so many times. Number four is capital reserves. Number five is resourcefulness and creativity. Number six is objectivity. This is hard at the moment, but it's important. Number seven is speed and opportunity. Um, and number eight is new solutions to new problems. Um, number nine is network. And number 10 is followers, fans and subscribers and their and your real value. So it's actually 10. And what I'm also going to do on this video only, I haven't done this for a long time. In fact, I haven't done a live for ages. I've been testing, doing some different types of content. Just um, every now and again, I do new tests to see the reach, the engagement. Um, I don't want to commoditize myself when you get used to me just doing a live every day. And, um, you know, therefore, I, I diminish value in you. Like Michael Jackson between albums. Go off a world, go and hide no media. I'm back, new album. No. Um, but I'm actually finding a lot of my text posts are getting higher reach and engagement, although this one's really good. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, a lot, for this video only, um, if you donate um, 2000 stars, it's actually 500 stars less than I've done this before. And I haven't done this for ages. Um, I will let you um, do a story video on either my Instagram, which has 37,700 or 30, 34,700 followers. Very engaged, my Instagram or on my Facebook which has 148,000 followers. So, um, yeah, just hit me up here in the live with 2,000 stars. Like I said, that's f I think it's 500 or 1,000 stars less than I've done it before in light of the lockdown and the difficulty many businesses are in. That's actually just net $20. Uh, if you donate those stars uh, while I'm doing this video, um, then um, you can send me in a video that's the length of a story. I know I'll post it either on my Instagram story or my Facebook story. So it'll either reach, you know, 35,000 plus or 148,000 plus as a way to help you support um, your local or national business. Whatever businesses you do, you can promote to, to my followers through my story. So you can do that anytime through this video. I've been asked, how much coffee um, do I have a day? Be honest. Well, why would I lie? I have a medium skinny cappuccino extra shot twice a day, one at 6 a.m. Uh, and one at about 10.30 a.m. Religiously every day, no more, no less, every day. Right, so emergency lockdown 3.0, survival and thriving. Survive and thrive strategies. Number one is now more than ever, multiple streams of income are vital. Um, and I think you knew that, you know, they used to be a luxury and now I think they're almost a necessity. Um, but I think what this lockdown has really shown us is that it's vital to have multiple income streams, not just to have a larger amount of money, but if various income streams slow down or halt, or even go into negative where you need to cash flow certain assets for months on end, like many people probably have in the lockdown, um, then it's important to have multiple streams. I think the average millionaire, millionaire has three. Um, I, some have nine plus. I think I have nine um, income streams. If you think um, book revenue, um, it's a good few hundred grand a year from books. Um, ad revenue from my personal brand, uh, my speaking revenue. The various property strategies we have, the two training companies we have, the letting agency we have now. And when it comes to um, building multiple income streams, don't try and build 10 at once. You'll just spread yourself way too thin. Um, but if you only have one um, and that's your only business, then, of course, um, that could just be shut, closed, dead. So um, I think it's important that you have at least one income stream that's totally unrelated from 
your main or other income sources. So let's say you'd built up your ISIS and stock portfolio over a decade or two and you, you know, had a bit of an income stream there. What I do is I turn on the accumulation, um, which means all of my income gets reinvested into my stock portfolio. But at one point that income, you know, will be able to fund my full lifestyle and then I might turn the income stream on. Um, I might keep it on accumulation while I don't necessarily need the income or we're not in any kind of crazy lockdown. And then I might turn the income or, do, you know, basic, basically the, the income being paid to me on, um, you, you know, when the income is required. Marika, thank you for the 2000 stars. Um, if anyone who's donated 2000 stars PMs me, I think I'll do eight of these. I, I don't think I'll do any more because I, I don't want it to be a commodity and people to get, you know, shout outs all the time, wanting to keep it as a, a scarce and valuable resource. So anyone who donates 2000 stars, you've got to be in the first eight. Private message me and, and we'll just liaise around you um, doing a video, sending it to me and then I'll put it on my story for you. So thank you for, uh, for your stars, Marika. So, um, you know, Mark's always saying to me in property, I don't want to be exposed. Um, I don't really want 40 percent of my portfolio or any more than that in any one type of property. So we've got single lets and HMOs. We've got pub conversions and then we've got sort of bigger developments that we're converting. Mark, doesn't we want to be more than, say, 40 percent exposed in commercial property? Um, we're probably... We probably are 60 percent residential, I'd say. He believes that residential is far less risky. The loans aren't likely to be called in, um, whereas commercial loans can be called in if they change their mind or you break their covenants or loan to value restrictions. Um, so, um, you know, you, having one income stream is, is actually exposure in one area. Um, uh, uh, and of course, it's also limited, isn't it? Of course, if you have multiple income streams, you get this compounded effect. So that great, uh, you know, write a book, build a podcast and a YouTube channel and build your, your following so that you can have sponsors and endorsements. Have a training company, which I'll talk about next, um, or an e-commerce business, as well as your main business. Build over time multiple streams of income. And the trick is to have at least one that's completely unrelated so that if one is, um, you know, struggling to survive, the other one can thrive and support it. Because if they're all related to the same thing and that industry takes a turn for the worse, if they're all in retail, for example, that's obviously potentially difficult. Um, Nicholas has just said, loving this content, Rob Moore. So thank you very much for that, Nicholas. Um, so that being said, I think it's wise to have many of your income streams related. If you tried to set up a cosmetics business, an e-commerce business, a, a drones and tech business, an app business, a property business. They're five completely different businesses. They're going to take you a long time to build up. And if you go from one to the other, to the other, to the other, it's like playing snakes and ladders. You go up a, a decent ladder and down a massive snake. And um, it, it's going to take you many years to learn the new industry. Whereas what we did was we start, Mark, Mark and I, we started buying property individually together um, and then, you know, we bought 20 in year one, another 30 in year two, got pretty good at that, knew what we were doing. Then we started sourcing properties for other people. Well, we're, that's 80% the same thing. It's just a few little tweaks. Then when we had enough properties, we built our letting agency. Well, we're already managing them. So it's 80% the same thing, just with a few tweaks. And then we started training people on how to do it. Well, we know it ourselves. We do it ourselves. So it's 80% the same thing. And then when you learn how to do marketing, for example, or sales, you can do them in different industries. So the trick is to build multiple income streams quickly is to build them in re related um, niches and industries whereby you carry 80% of what you've learned over. Um, I... When I explain this properly, a lot of people got a really big epiphany when it came to creating multiple income streams, because what a lot of people are trying to do is start five or six or eight businesses all at once and realizing they're getting nowhere. And I wrote about this in detail in multiple streams of property income here about setting up um, initially related income streams, the quickest leveraging the existing one. But then you need one unrelated one in case, you know, because if you're all in property, you are overexposed. Um, it, or being in, in one asset class, you never know what could happen, like a, an outbreak of a virus, for example. I've seen another um, 2,000 stars coming in. Gordon, thank you for the 2,000 stars. Private message me, Gordon. I'm doing eight of these only. Um, you get a shout out story video so you can record it and promote your products or services, whatever you want. And I will put it on either my Instagram story or my Facebook story you choose. Combine them, we've got about 180,000 people that follow me on those two combined. So for what, $20 net? <laughs> what a bargain. Where else are you going to get that kind of 
and return on ad spend, but uh, I'm doing it to um, you know, help and support my community and followers through this lockdown. I also want to say thank you for being a, a follower, a community member, a subscriber of mine. I'm really grateful to you. OK, um, number two, then, is low overhead models. So if you're in retail where you've got masses of stock, you've got huge leases, you spend all the money on the shop fit and you've got that massive capital um, advance outlay, then that's the opposite of a low overhead model. That's a high overhead model. Then you've got all those staff and everything else. So um, there are many more modern um, business models which have much lower overhead. You might need a phone and a laptop, an internet connection and a couple of subscriptions and that's it. But things like you know, e-commerce business, especially if you're selling information, building your personal brand, all you need is you. <laughs> you don't need any extra overhead. Consulting, freelancing, training, online courses. Um, all of these business models have a really low overhead. Um, which means they have virtually no fixed costs and nearly all variable costs. And that's what you want if you want to be lean and agile and you don't like the risk. Now, look, if you want to build a massive empire, you might take on businesses that have overhead. But, you know, taking on leases and, um, you know, having premises and these big long terms, five, 10, 25 year loans, these put stress on a business. Um, and, it, you know, look, you, you might want to grow your empire. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying this is emergency lockdown 3.0 survival thriving strategies. So low overhead, agile business models. Again, let me repeat them. E-commerce, information marketing, build, building a personal brand, referral based marketing, consulting, freelancing, online courses and education, public speaking, all of these things. They have virtually no fixed costs, virtually no overhead. OK, number three, then, is to have a highly pivotal or pivotable business model. You know, could you close it really quick? How long would it take you to close your business, settle your creditors and be able to start again? Because if it's months or years, then obviously there's risk there. Um, how quickly could you adapt the business model? So, you know, I was scared. Well, I mean, my business partner, and my MD were a bit more scared than me. And, and I um, vicariously experienced some of their fear. I'm, u I'm usually the positive one. Um, but definitely when the lockdown happened um, and we faced the, the real possibility of doing zero events. Now, we're a, an 850 event day a year training company. Well, I've got two training companies, but you, you put them together. We do about 850 training days, courses, events a year. That's two and a half a day. And then all of a sudden you can do zero and you don't know how long for. And you look in the bank account and you look at all your assets and resources and you look at your overhead and you work out your burn rate and you halve your overhead and you work out your burn rate. Um, and even though we had years of burn rate, especially with halved overhead, I didn't want to burn all my money and it was scary because it's uncertain. We've never been there before. But we quickly, literally within weeks, um, created online courses and we created one online course a week for 12 weeks. Um, and it would normally take us six months to a year to create a new course. Um, and the quality was still there. And of course, now we've got the global scalability, the flexibility, the lower cost to us to um, actually run the program in the first place. Don't have to run our training suite and the, and the food and um, you know, or hotels and travel and all of that that is involved in um, event costs. So we actually had, although we didn't really know it, a highly pivotal, pivotable business model. And I think that that's really important. And if you own 50 restaurant trains across, across the country, you do not have a highly pivotable business model. You have the opposite of that. Um, so just make sure that um, you know what you would do if you had to adapt, flex, close various businesses. Um, events go to online, for example, um, restaurants actually did were able to adapt to the takeaway model or the delivery model. Point four, then, is having capital reserves. You should be having a SANT account. I wrote about that in the book Money, which is there. Save and never touch. And you should be building your capital base. You should be spending 90 percent, then 80, then 70, then 60 percent over time of your income and saving 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. Now, some of that saving will turn into investment and some of that saving will turn into save and never touch. But the more capital reserves you have, the more you can ride out parts of the cycle. Now, um, when things are bad, it never lasts. When things are good, it never lasts. So if you've got capital res reserves, then you can ride out the bad times. The good times will come back and you can make non-volatile decisions, non-emotional decisions. You know, a lot of businesses, they sort of struggle. They sell, they sell out. They sell really cheap. They probably shouldn't have sold. They probably could have carried on. 
And, and we make bad emotional decisions when there's a lot of fear. And there is a lot of fear right now. So um, but the more capital reserves you have, um, the, the, the more strategic you can be, the more long term you can think. And Mike, I want to say thank you for the 2000 stars. Mike said, I'm donating these to be used for the company you think need the shout out the most. Rob, I don't need it right now. That's really kind. I'll go through and pick someone who I think could really benefit that from that. Mike, that's really kind of you. What a lovely thing to do. Um, all right. Yeah. So if anyone wants um, to um, basically promote your video, um, you know, do a promotion video on my story um, on Instagram or Facebook, just send me 2000 stars. That's actually just $20 net to me. It sounds like a lot, but it's virtually nothing. Um, I'm going to do eight from this video. That's three, but I haven't got anywhere near down on all the comments yet. So there could be more. OK, so your first goal would be to get to three months on your current overhead um, cash in bank. Uh, and then to six months and then to 12 months um, and even 12 months a half um, running costs is, is not bad because you could probably halve your costs if you had to, if you had to survive. But building capital reserves gives you that longevity and, and, and stops you making short term, emotional, rash, fear based decisions. OK, number five, then, is resourcefulness and creativity. Now, I actually believe the greatest security that you can ever have is not the amount of cash you have. It's not even the amount of experience you have, because the thing with experience is, um, yes, it does help the future, but it's always based on the past. So someone could have gone through the last recession of 08 or the recession before that. And you could say that gives them experience for the next recession. Well, in some ways it does, but it's very generic. And in other ways, they've never experienced a new recession and they've definitely have not experienced COVID or a lockdown. So I would argue even above experience as giving you security is resourcefulness, is creativity, is the, the ability to create, to block out fear, to block out all this um, latent built up. And then like, I don't even know what the word is, but just all this fear being thrown away everywhere. Um, your ability to immunize yourself from that, protect yourself from that, ignore that and be resourceful with the assets you have, the contacts the, the finances, the marketing and sales skills, the staff, um, what new product or service you, can you create? What new problem is in the market that needs solving that you could um, create a product or a service around? Now, human beings are infinitely resourceful. Um, if you put a human being in a situation where it's life or death and it's, their survival is um, based on their ability to be resourceful, they will do and say and try anything. Everyone will become a brilliant salesperson, you know, if their children are about to be kidnapped or the things that they love the most will be taken from them or their life was on the line. So we have this amazing ability to survive, to hustle, to be resourceful, to be creative, to create. But we don't use it often. We use 5% of it or whatever. It's latent. It's inside. We don't need it because we're too comfortable. Um, Emma said you only seem to be able to send 325 stars. Why don't you try and do it in batches, Emma? So 325, then 325, then 325. The stars feature is still quite new. I actually haven't done a stars offer for ages. So, um, yeah, just try and do it in batches. Those of you that have never got stars before, you can actually just buy stars on the button while you're watching this video. Go and get them and come back to the video. But I'm going to do eight max, first eight, and then uh, I probably won't do another offer like this for a while. I'm doing a lot less live videos now um, just because, I, like I said, I think that the algorithms on social media, especially Facebook, um, they seem to really my um, text posts are getting a lot more reach and engagement than my live videos. And I just don't want to over commoditize myself. I mean, I, at times I was doing two live videos a day and I know a lot of people were finding that valuable and useful, but oh, there's Rob again, there's Rob again. Oh yeah, Rob will do whatever he wants. Yeah, they got to get Rob to do a dance. People message me all the time. Rob, will you sing happy birthday? Rob, will you do this video for people? And people just see Rob as a little jester. Rob will do whatever you want. Not anymore. <laughs> I, just when everyone expects, thinks that they know what I'm up to, I'll change and do something else. But I can't stress enough how resourcefulness and creativity and innovation and your ability to solve problems and think outside of the box and um, be quirky and individual and unique and adaptable and forward thinking. These are all so valuable. And these actually supersede the need for money or capital investment. Um, number six, then, in my list of emergency lockdown, survive and thrive strategies 
is objectivity. Now, I believe this is actually one of the most important skills for a human being, especially an entrepreneur, if you want to grow and scale and have longevity and success and it to be sustainable. It's very hard. I will put, you know, I will say that, um, but work on it. And objectivity is immunizing yourself from extremes. Now, social media loves extremes. You know, Apple or Samsung, right or wrong, left or right, good or bad, um, you, you know, fan or hater, um, and you know, scam or business opportunity. But in reality. Um, you can't take anything and, and separate it. Um, there is good, there is upside in all downside and downside in all upside. And I believe if you take anything, you could pick it apart or build it up, depending on which viewpoint you take. Um, and, and I will challenge anyone to say um, anything that is all good or all bad, um, even in you know really really extreme situations where it's deemed all to be bad. Um, you know, people often um, get meaning and lessons from it that they hadn't um, seen before. Um, often a lesson will keep repeating itself and it'll get worse and worse and bigger and bigger until you get the lesson. Um, so actually, it's um, you know, usually all pain and difficulty and challenge is merely a form of feedback for you to grow. Um, so objectivity is being able to look at both sides of an argument, um, look at the upsides and downsides of the lockdown and the recession that might be looming in the next few years, who knows? Um, and, you know, the, the um, COVID and, um, you know, if your business has struggled, what's the up, upside opportunity? What's been good about it? You know, if you look at the lockdown itself, a lot of people have said they've connected more with their children. They've taken that break that they needed. Um, you know, they've um, focused on self-care. Um, they've spent a lot of time alone in a good way. And then there's people that have said they've been really lonely and their business has really struggled and their revenue is really down and their confidence and mental health has been affected. But, but essentially, we're all experiencing the same thing. So objectivity is immunizing yourself from the extremes, not believing too much all the good and the hype and not believing too much all the bad, seeing the upside and the downside and the downside and the upside and being balanced and then finding solutions. Um, and um, there is always a solution. And, and my business partner, um, he's a genius and he's very good with numbers and analytics and he's very good at um, reducing risk. But because he sees numbers and analytics and risk, he can get himself to the point where he can be quite doomsday-ish, you know, because he has to immerse himself in that. And he just sees all the time the downside. Um, and I had a chat with him a few days ago in a really good, um, deep conversation uh, and basically said, Mark, we always find a way. We've been doing this 15 years and we've had many challenges. And I listed like eight of them and he could have listed another 28. And I went, yeah, we survived that. We sorted that. We fixed that. Yeah, actually, that was good. We turned that around. We actually made that into an opportunity. And at the time, there was a few of those where Mark basically said, it's over. We're doomed. The world is fucked. We're all, this is the end. Oh, it's been a nice ride. We're over. Um, but actually, there's always a solution. There is always a solution to every challenge. Um, so just make sure that you're objective enough to see that there's a solution to every challenge. Um, I, I actually enjoy a challenge. I enjoy a bit of a crisis in some regards because I think it gives you a chance to step up and show what you're really about and who you really are and how you're different and unique and how you're valuable and useful and how other people probably couldn't. Um, many of our competitors have gone um, in this lockdown. They just could, you know, they either just stopped by choice or they went bust or they were forced to stop. Um, and, and I think we've really set ourselves apart and shown who we are. Um, and it took work, but it was a challenge. And, you know, you can see a problem as a problem or you can see a problem as a challenge. And a true challenge is something that you rise to. You step up, you enjoy. Emma, thank you for the stars. If you um, private message me, Emma, then I will send you instructions on sending your video to me that you can either put on my Instagram story, through me, of course, or my Facebook page story. Um, just whichever is suited your business the most. So um, like I said, I'm doing a maximum of eight of those. Um, I don't know how many that is now, but it's quite a few. I think that's four or five. Um, so 2,000 stars, and you can send me a video, the length of a story, and I will post it either on my Instagram story or my Facebook story just for this video. Um, yeah, just as um, giving you a bit of value and supporting businesses through this lockdown. I actually don't know anyone else who does that. Um, and how much would you have to pay as an ad to reach 148,500 people? That would cost you thousands of pounds, thousands of pounds. I know because I run a lot of ads, spend 250 grand a month on ads. So I know. Um, OK, number six then is speed and opportunity. I said this at the start of the lockdown to my team. We've got to be quick, the quickest. We've got to be quick. Speed wins in this world. You know, I mean, information is being 
um, shared and exchanged fast at the speed of light. Um, and it's the quick and the dead. Um, and that was proved to be correct. And yeah, you don't want to be so quick that you make bad mistakes, but better to, um, you know, be um, slightly imperfect, but first to market or second to market or fast to market than slow. And, you know, the market's already gone. Um, and I see us launching products and services and there are competitors coming in after us. And I realise that initial window, those first few weeks or months, um, they're, you know, they're vital. So don't do things slowly and grab the opportunities that come your way. I've actually got a new book coming out in 2021 called Opportunity, teaching you how to you know, seize the day, take opportunities, take them quickly, implement them quickly, get out of your own fears and doubts and emotions and insecurities and what ifs and fears of failure and rejection, all of these. I mean, if you knew you would never fail and you knew you would never be judged, you would just implement everything that you thought that would be useful to you and you, you would probably do it quickly and you wouldn't second guess yourself and get all overwhelmed and um, paralysed. Um, but speed is vital right now. Speed to market, speed of communication, speed of constant and never ending improvement and iteration. And, you know, your um, your version one, two, three, four, five and how quickly you get them out to market. The next point, then, is new solutions to new problems. So um, right now, the world has a lot of new problems and people are selling masks, PPE. Um, you know, some of the big pharma companies are doing all right. I'm not no judgment, just saying. Um, but right now we have new problems um, and we have new problems with the planet and plastics and um, killing the planet and um, how we're feeding ourselves and the amount of meat we've consumed. Um, and these problems weren't here or we didn't know about them 30, 40 years ago. And this lockdown will create new ones, this COVID um, and the fallout of it will create new problems. And new problems have new solutions and new solutions have new products and new products and new business opportunities for you. So you just got to find them. You've just got to um, look for them. I interviewed the, fa the co-founder, the original co-founder of Netflix. And he says, what I do is I look around everything with a skeptical eye, trying to break it apart, looking at everything as a problem. And then when I find a problem, I then try and immediately go into looking at it with rose tinted glasses. What's the solution to that problem? And I, I think that that's um, a really good thing to do. Um, which, wow, look at that. I have never seen that before. Um, but um, Marek has just given me some stars and there's this new feature. He's just got a, um, an orange fire two week streak. So I guess that's um, back to back star donations, Marek. Thank you for your two week streak. Um, you are very kind. If you up it to 2000, I'll give you a shout out video, a story. Austin, thank you for the 2000 stars. If you private message me, Austin, then um, we can sort out the details of you sending me your video and I'll put it on my story on either um, Instagram or Facebook, depending on um, wh where you would like, um, where you think your clients might be. OK, um, the next one then is your network. So if you have mentors, you know, people with multiple cycle um, experience. So, you know, decades of business experience, entrepreneurs, positive or at least balanced people, peers um, people who are successful in other industries, people who've got contacts themselves, resourceful people, um, you know, specialists. Then um, you're always going to be able to navigate the challenging world of business and the changing world of business. And um, they say your network is your net worth. It's such a cliche, but it's very true. Um, uh, and so if you've got millionaires and billionaires and celebrities and well-connected people and really great technicians and specialists, um, you know, people with decades of experience and experience the highs and lows and, you know, people who employ loads of people, um, influencers, if you've got all these people in your network, then you'll, you'll probably always be OK um, because you build the relationship and the goodwill with these people. Um, over time and you give to them as much as you can. And then occasionally when you might need something, you can, you know, uh, um, withdraw from that emotional bank account that you've built up. OK, right. Um, and then um, your followers, fans, subscribers. So um, some people have said that a follower is worth about one pound per person per year to you. So um, apparently, if I have 148,500 followers on Facebook, that should be 148,500 pound a year in revenue to me. It's probably a bit more, actually, and I don't sell enough. I know my haters would say I sell too much. Um, so, but I don't sell much, really, at all on my social media. Um, 
But I think you could make it £10 per follower per year. But um, if you have an email subscriber, a follower, a fan, uh, you know, a like, um, people in a Facebook community, followers on LinkedIn, you know, all these social media channels that you have, the more people that you have, the, um, the, the basically that's an asset. I mean, it's an asset because they'll donate stars to you. They'll join your supporter program. I have now 3,000 supporters, pretty much. It might have just peaked under because I haven't done a promotion for quite a while. Um, but I, I, I aim to have 8,500 supporters by the end of next year, and I think that's an achievable goal. I'm not even two years into my supporter program yet. Um, but 8,500 supporters is over £20,000 a month in revenue. Now, that would be enough for most people to live on most families to live on. Um, and then I'm going to be launching my Patreon, relaunching my Patreon premium program. My YouTube premium program is launching in January, I think. Um, you know, you may buy some of my courses or my books. You may end up being a, an endorser or a sponsor of mine. We might partner and um, you might hire me as a keynote speaker. You might become a progressive or disruptive approved sponsor. Um, there's all these different ways that you could end up becoming a customer of, a customer of mine. Um, and if you don't have any followers, fans or subscribers, you don't have any customers. And if you have thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of followers and fans and subscribers, then you have masses of revenue. Um, I did a post about that um, lady. Um, let me find out. Um, let me just get you her, her um, proper name. Um, but she sold her bath water for $22 a pop to her followers. She built a massive following, millions, um, and sold them. She, uh, you know, she's kind of blonde and, um, you, you know, uses her body as her brand, if you like. Um, let's have a look. But, uh, yeah, she basically monetized her network. Now, I think that's maybe a little bit taking the piss out of your um, followers. But let's be honest, if I could sell my bath water at $22 um, dollars or pounds a pop, and this is important, my followers and fans wanted it in their droves, would I? I'd be an idiot not to. Um, but she, she highly monetized her, her followership. You know, of course, you see people on Instagram all the time, you know, brand endorsements. I know my friend um, Katie Piper, she's got a big contract with Pantene and um, I've, she's got other endorsements. So that was it. Belle Delphine. Thank you, Nicholas. Belle Delphine. Um, actually, the post I put on um, my Facebook page got a lot of engagement. Where is she? Um, yeah, we had 255 comments. Um, seven and a half thousand engagements. Um, so she made 10 million pounds after selling um, thousands of units of her bath water in only a few months to a loyal fan base for 22 pounds a pop. Um, but the point, the moral of the story, whether you agree with the product or not, um, the moral of the story is build a following. Um, that is an asset. And of course, if your business model changes, your followers still follow you. The good thing about, I mean, if you have an email subscriber list, um, then, you know, like, for example, Progressive Property has more than a quarter of a million email subscribers. Um, but I couldn't go and sell my bath water to them. <laughs> They'd be like, Rob, you've lost your shit. <laughs> no pun intended. And... Um, you know, they're interested in property, but people who follow you, they're interested in whatever it is that you've got to say or do. Usually, I mean, you know, if you go a bit too wacky, they might, a few might unfollow you, but most of your followers and fans will always be followers and fans. So when you write, whether you write a book called Life Leverage or Money or Start Now, Get Perfect Later or Reinvent Yourself or whatever, you know, they'll probably buy it. They'll probably back you. They trust you. So it's very important to build this following. And how do you do that? Well, you can do that through constant content and value. Um, which and you'll get shares and you'll get a cascading effect of trickle down followers and fans and recommendations. You can um, start investing, a, you know, a, a consistent amount of money on advertising to build your email database and your followers and fans. I've got a, a married couple here, Marek and Marika, competing with each other. So, Marek, thank you for the 2000 stars. You'll be able to private message me, send me a story video, which I will put on my Facebook or my Instagram for you. I reckon we've got one, maybe of two left now. Um, so 2000 stars uh, and you can send me a video. And I'll, oh, Alan, thank you for the 2000 stars. Last chance now, probably. Um, but yeah, you can send me a story length video and I will either put it on my Instagram story for a day or I'll put it on my Facebook story for a day. 
Um, and those two platforms have a combined 180,000 followers. So it's just a way, a way for me to give back because 2,000 stars is only $20. It's really just a, a token amount just to show you're serious, I suppose. OK, let me summarise then. I hope this content's been useful. I've had some nice comments, so thank you very much. So emergency lockdown 3.0, survive and thrive strategies. Um, I think I covered 10, but create multiple related income streams, but have at least one that's unrelated. Number two, have be in low overhead business models. And if you're not, then set up a, a side business where you are. E-commerce, information marketing, marketing sales, personal brand consulting, freelancing, public speaking. Have a business which has um, higher variable and lower fixed cost base. Um, so fixed costs are leases and longer term costs variable. I'll turn them on and off as and when. Number three is have a highly pivotable business model. Can you close them, adapt them, evolve them quickly? Maybe physical events adapt to online, restaurant adapt to takeaway or delivery. Number four, build your capital reserves. Three, six, then 12 months running costs, assuming no sales or uh, so at worst on half overhead. That'll probably ride out most damn storms. The next one was resourcefulness and creativity, totally, infinitely available to all human beings. It's just we don't use anywhere near all of our resources available to us, our creativity, our hustle. Um, uh, objectivity was the next point. So to be able to see all sides of an argument, to be able to see an upside and a downside in every situation, every challenge, what's the upside opportunity, every difficulty, what's the, the spin-off um, product or service that you could create, the new world problems, what are the new solutions? Um, you know, where there is pain and hardship and difficulty, what, um, you know, how can you turn that into a business model and an opportunity that is meaningful, but you also, you can monetize. Um, I think that um, so many people are not using resourcefulness, creativity, objectivity, uh, and, and it's free. They're, they're free to all human beings. They cost nothing. You have them in droves. It's just maybe you don't believe it. Um, but I bet you when your back's against the wall, man, you can surprise yourself at, um, you know, how um, just how you can get shit done. OK, next then is speed and opportunity, implementing and acting and deciding and thinking fast and taking these opportunities. The next one is new solutions to new problems because the world's have world. The world has a load, a big set of new problems. So what are the new solutions to those? Every solution has a problem. Every problem has a solution. It's in, intrinsic within a balanced universe. Every upside has a downside. Every downside has an upside. Um, and then your network of mentors and business owners and entrepreneurs and employers and, and strategists and, um, you know, people who peers, people who keep you accountable and motivated and are positive and supportive and balanced, um, really successful people, very, you know, multi-cycle experienced entrepreneurs and then building your followers, your fan base, uh, your subscribers um, because they have a, an asset value to you and the bigger you're following, um, the more you'll always be able to adapt, um, you know, and uh, keep the wolves from the door and, you know, make enough pocket money to put the food on the table and have a little bit of spare change. So thanks for tuning in. It's been fun. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this live video. Um, and thanks for following my work. Stay engaged. So anywhere you see a, a post of mine, like uh, or, or comment on it so that you continue to see it, because otherwise the algorithms will not show you more of my work if you don't engage in it. Um, and I've got a few surprises coming up in the next few weeks, which I think you'll really love. I've gone on a bit of a content purge mission in the last few weeks, and I am for the next few weeks. Um, had a push of Gerald Ratner's um, Reinvent Yourself book launch, and because we did a massive Black Friday um, but uh, it's just going to be give, 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 give now. So final chance. I think someone said we had one or two places left. They counted on the um, stars donation. So 2000 stars um, gets you. Um, you can basically record a video and promote your products and services, whatever it is that you offer and that you want. Um, and I will post it as a story on either Instagram or Facebook um, for one day. Um, and there's a combined followership following of 180,000 people on those. So. Um, how much would that cost you in ads to get that reach? Thousands of pounds. 
2,000 stars is $20, so last chance right now. But if you're watching the recording, um, uh, Trevor's just done it. Good timing there, Trevor. Thank you for the 2,000 stars. If you're watching the re recording, you can still do it. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for following my work. You're legends. I hope this has been helpful to you. Stay calm, stay balanced, think solutions. Just see every um, disruption as an opportunity. Every challenge is a way for you to grow and thrive. Show the world what you're about. You know, how do you handle a crisis? How do you handle difficult situations? How do you manage your emotions? This is a chance for you to shine, to stand up, to show that you're a leader, to show that you've got what it takes. People need people like you in the world right now. So I believe in you. So go out there and fucking make it happen. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. And thanks for all the nice comments too.